is haunting our top seed, Michelle Feldman. She won her second title of the year last week and looks to win her first major tonight in the finals of the Hammer Players Championship. PWBA, the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois, for the finals of the Hammer Players Championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us for the PWBA's longest-running event. For 28 years, Bowling's Finest has been making their mark here in Rockford, Illinois. For the past three of those years, it's been the new kids on the block that have risen to the challenge. Only one newcomer will have an opportunity tonight against four athletes who have a combined 47 years of tour experience. Let's meet them. Qualifying fifth in her 216th consecutive event, Iron Woman, Tish Johnson. In the number four position, top contender for Rookie of the Year, Kelly Kulik. Qualifying third, the mainstay of this program in 2001, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. In the number two position, looking for her fourth title of the year, Liz Johnson. And in the enviable top spot for the second consecutive week, Michelle Feldman. Working with me tonight, the lady who finished 11th this week, Kathy Dorn Lizzie. And Kathy, it seems like all season long we've been saying Carolyn Dorn Ballard broke yet another record, actually tied a record. Tonight we get to say she broke one. Carolyn is the Thai queen of the PWBA Tour, joining groups by winning three consecutive titles, making six consecutive TV appearances, and making the show tonight breaking last week's record for the most TV appearances in one year with 16. Jan, this lady still has three tournaments to bowl. Well, definitely her best year so far. Our number two seed, Liz Johnson, is also having her finest season despite a pretty serious back injury. Well, Liz Johnson has had a great career in her short period of time out here. She's made six TV appearances. She's won three titles in one year previously. This is by far her best year ever out on tour. Tonight is her eighth TV appearance and she's looking for title number four. In spite of that back injury, not bowling next week's event takes a lot of guts and a lot of pain. Well, two ladies having great seasons. Our top seed, Michelle Feldman, admittedly was not having her best season, at least until last week when she won. Now, that may have changed things for her, and she told us afterward a little bit about how she felt on that win. It, it feels wonderful. Um, I haven't made a show in three months, and after coming off a year I had last year, making a show th this week and winning, it, it meant a lot to me, and hopefully I can conquer the sports condition next, <laughs> next week, too. <laughs> I don't foresee you having a problem. Well, she certainly didn't. You called that right on the head. What secret did you know? Well, I watch these ladies bowl every week. I share the same ups and downs. In the beginning of the week, Michelle Feldman was simply on fire, shooting unbelievable scores. During the week, the other ladies started to bowl a little better, and it got Michelle a little nervous. Years ago, that nervousness would have destroyed her confidence. But after winning last week, I see a renewed mental toughness and maturity at a tonight's tournament leader. Well, once again, she'll sit in the wings and wait, hoping for the same outcome. We're ready for that first match. It'll be Carolyn Doran Ballard, Kelly Kulik, and Tish Johnson. Handshakes around and we're ready to start the Hammer Players Championship. It's a major event for us. Carolyn Doran Ballard will start. 37 years old and 12 of those years on tour come from Carolyn Doran Ballard. And to think she started the year with just 10 titles. That's right where we're going. <laughs> 16 titles and six of them this year already. That's the one stat we have to keep upping one every week. Great opening shot. <laughs> Kelly Kulik, she's the, she actually in her rookie year, she's the one hope for the new kids on the block this year at the Hammer Players Championship, just 24 years old. Leaving a 10 pin there, and I'll, I'll let you know quickly, I saw two years on tour there. It's her first full-time year, and she does qualify for rookie status because she hasn't bowled four events prior to this year. Tish Johnson quickly up on the approach, and disaster in her opening shot. <laughs> she was playing to the crowd <laughs> before we started this event, maybe played a little too much, but that's her personality. Absolutely, that's the way she relaxes. Maybe relax too much. 
easy spare. Oh my God, I, I spoke too soon. Kathy, wow. I there were quite a few missed spares this week, uh, single pin spares, and has been a little bit on that score condition. Tish doesn't pick up the spare, so a nine count. Well, and every week we bowl on a different surface, and that is going to determine how you shoot your spares. Normally, you can statistically keep lining up the way you always have with your A game on your spares, but the surface will always dictate yeah. minor adjustments. Well, spare balls even hooking a little bit on this condition. Carolyn Dorn Ballard playing an extreme outside line. Kelly Kulik was very hopeful that, that she would actually have a good line of the pocket because no one would be playing in her area of the lane. So she was confident about that coming out of last night. She sure was. And not looking good so far for Kelly Kulik, the rookie. Tish Johnson just hung on to make this telecast, made it by just three pins. She had a, a rough day yesterday on the lanes. Right through the head pin, right on the face of the head pin, leaves the big four. It is makeable, but you just want to go for the, the pins, which is a smart move. Especially this early in the match, she definitely needs to take the wood. Tish Johnson now looking for her first mark of the game. She had a 213 average to qualify. Well, the PWBA is coming to an end, and we head to Nevada for the final stops. First off is the Brunswick Wim Women's World Open, followed by the Brunswick Shootout November 4th through the 10th at the Suncoast Bowling Center in Las Vegas. We then take a couple of weeks off and head to the richest tournament of the year, the 2001 Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship, presented by Don Laughlin's Riverside Resort in Laughlin, Nevada. The tournament runs Friday, November 30th through Sunday, December 9th. Make sure you come out to those. And there's a look at the competition points for the Brunswick Women's World Open. You can see how close it is. The top eight make it. You can see what some of them earned this week so far. The ladies with no points this week, they're in the telecast. They can earn anywhere from 625 points to 1,000 points for a victory this week. It'll tighten things up quite a bit. Unfortunately for Kendra Gaines, she broke her foot yes. two weeks ago. She was in the top eight and obviously now has fallen out and will not be able to get back into the top eight. Carolyn Doran Ballard working on the first two. Once again, a $50,000 bonus on the line if someone shoots a 300 on the television show tonight. Come on. Oh, we almost saw that uh, the common leave of Carolyn Doran Ballard, the 710. Yeah. But she normally doesn't leave it this early. No, it's way too <laughs> early in the match. Kelly Kulik, one of the things she was very excited about was her ball speed this week. She said it was it was good. She was down at the line, good ball speed. She just doesn't look comfortable right now, Kathy. I crossed with her this week, and she was so aggressive and so confident all week. And that's a shame, too, because last night she told us she was just sparking in match play. Everything felt great. Her ball, her timing, she rode the intensity level all the way to get herself to the show. And it, she just, like you said, she just looks a little uncomfortable right now, but what a beautiful game on this young lady. Maybe a little jitters, obviously, as we said, a rookie year, but it, it is her sixth show this year, breaking her goal. Her goal was five shows this year, and she's broken that, but wanted two wins, obviously, short of that with no wins yet. And it is a major. Tish Johnson in the third frame, working on a spare. Weebles wobble, but they did not fall down. 5-9 still standing. You can see she looks confused, Kathy. Well, she bowled great on Sunday. She came in Tuesday morning even and shot 240 over. She really struggled, though, on Wednesday. I'm sorry, on Tuesday. She came in and she found the lanes to be a little tighter, which is what I see now. And she needs to just adjust a little bit. Well, she spares it up, and Carolyn Doran Ballard jumps off to a quick lead at the Cherry Bowl. We'll be right back with more. Lodge Hotels, first with families, relax with Travelodge. And by PWBA.com, the official site for news and information about the Professional Women's Bowling Association. While we were away, Carolyn Doran Ballard with a terrible shot in the fourth, 2 4 8 10. Tish Johnson barely hit the head pin for a 3 7 9 split in the sixth, and Kelly Kulik was definitely bitten by the 7 10 bug. 
This was in the fifth frame. In the pocket. 7-10 split. Bitten not once, but twice again in the sixth frame. Same thing, and Kelly Kulik followed that up by coming up high, leaving a 4-10. So Carolyn Doran Ballard now in the lead by 21 pins. Kathy Doran Lizzie, I know you can relate to that. I understand you left a 7-10, not back-to-back, -back, but on the same lane twice in a row. Yes, as a matter of fact, it was against Tish. So they were everywhere. Carry was very difficult. Your angle of entry to the pocket was very crucial. Your ball speed was very crucial. But nine spare was a great frame because the lanes... The transition was a little tough for Carrie. Yeah. And a lot of 7-10s. Tish Johnson said she left 14 of them in match play. That's a lot. Yeah, and like the last 16 games. But then you see the pin action here. Her ball came up just a little light, but there are times where you blow them around and, and you get the tap. And again, you could, that was Carolyn's shot. You could see the 7-10 was up for a minute. Kelly Kulik now, she really has to regroup. Leaving a 10 pan, you know, she's made some good shots. She had a low game this week of 126, that being Kelly Kulik, but it had to look something like this. You know, the pocket 710s all over the place. Oh, it had to be, but she regrouped her focus, she said, and came back and shot 268 the next game, which is phenomenal on this type of condition. Pretty impressive. She had said she also changed balls to a ball that felt better. Kelly now trying to convert the 10 pin. Remember, she missed one already. She covers it up. Now, Tish Johnson has been inducted, or will be inducted, into the WIBC Hall of Fame. Here's what she had to say about it. It feels absolutely wonderful. I thought I thought I wasn't going to get in until after I retired. Uh, so when I got the news uh, two weeks ago, I was really ecstatic. It, I wish it was closer to home, so it'd be easier to get everybody there. But my mom already booked her flight, and we're ready to go. So Tish, our second PWBA member this year that will be inducted and next year into the WIBC Hall of Fame. You saw Cheryl Daniels a couple weeks ago on the show talking about it. Those will be the two in, in the performance category. And very well deserved. Carolyn Doran Barrow is now leading by 41 pins in the ninth frame and she is lined up and striking. She has a great shot, but she also told us that she played in the first day. Saw what a great shot Liz Johnson had playing way out and readjusted her lines. And she said from then on, she had a great reaction. So it's inter interesting to see that the ladies sometimes will go and look at what another athlete is doing and how they're playing the lanes and move oh, accordingly. Absolutely, and you'd be a fool not to. Believe me, somebody's watching you from behind when you don't know it to see where you're playing. So Carolyn Doran Ballard will move on. But first, when we come back, I'll talk with a very special guest. And everyone knows the WIBC National Championship travels around the world, but next year it's in a special place, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And there's a lot more to do in Milwaukee than just bowling. However, right here we're to, here to talk about the actual championship tournament and Milwaukee. Yes, uh, Milwaukee is the home of uh, bowling headquarters, WIBC, and it's also fondly referred to as the bowling capital of the world. So we're really looking forward to uh, bowlers from all over the country, all over the world, uh, coming to Milwaukee. Well, who is eligible to compete? And what kind of events are there? Well, our championship tournament is open to all WIBC members and uh, of all skill levels because we do have four divisions of our team doubles and singles event. Well, I, I heard that there's a lot of special dates going to open up on November 1. Yeah, so on November 1, we're opening up uh, uh, many of the spots that have been reserved for delegates and, and queens and senior queens entrants that didn't pick up those spots. So between April 17th and April 27th and May 3rd through the 5th, we're opening up some spots that are open to any teams that want to bowl during those times. Well, you talked about the queens briefly. I know that's a very pr prestigious event. And who can bowl that? Are there average requirements? There's no average requirement for the WIBC Queens Tournament. It's open to amateurs and professionals. However, it is a double elimination tournament, which is a, a very grueling format, and generally the higher average bowlers will take part in that. Well, since you do want to meet the needs of all women bowlers, you're also having a senior Queens. What are the requirements there? Well, the senior Queens is going to be held in conjunction with the Queens Tournament. The requirement there is to is an age requirement, 55 years of age or older. Uh, anybody that wants to bowl, uh, regardless of uh, high average, low average, is eligible to compete in that as well. Well, where should people go for more information on this? 
The best place to go is to WIBCTournament.com, or you can call bowling headquarters at 414-423-9006. Thanks, Roseanne, and thanks personally for all that you do for the PWBA. Well, the WIBC is a very proud sponsor of the Professional Women's Bowling Association, and we're very glad to do our part to help women's bowling thrive and survive, and especially on TV. It's a great partnership. Thanks. Along with Roseanne Kuhn, Sheila Nyron, WIBC Director of Services, came down for this event, as well as Darlene Baker, the WIBC Director. They're enjoying the action so far. Final score of match one, Carolyn Dorn Ballard 233 to Culix 152 and Johnson's 171. That means Carolyn Dorn Ballard will continue on to face the other Johnson, Liz Johnson, that is, right after this. Things to do besides just bowl, but we hope you're bowling. We're bowling tonight. You're here inside the Cherry Bowl. Liz Johnson is ready for the semifinal match. She'll be challenged by Carolyn Doran Ballard. Liz Johnson has decided to start the match, therefore she will finish last. Kathy, she wants the pressure on her, or you think she's choosing because of Elaine? I think she's choosing because of Elaine. So she wants to finish on lane 10. Good opening shot. And Kathy, she's going to play a similar line to Carolyn. Yeah, as I said before, Liz really lined Carolyn up, of course, without Liz knowing. Exactly. <laughs> but Carolyn, a lot of the ladies played further in because the condition hooked more this week. But look at Carolyn's year. I mean, 20 tournaments, 20 match plays, 6 titles, 18 top 10s. I mean, it's almost ridiculous. It almost is. It yeah. is. Her lowest finish, I believe, 14th this year. Yeah. And like I said before, in telecast, you have to go back to 1999 to find a finish lower than 15. Yeah, I hope I'm that ridiculous next year. <laughs> if you are, I won't be seeing you sitting next to me here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Carolyn coming up light, leaving the bucket. Now, Liz and Carolyn can play the same area, but of course their games are slightly different. Liz can go harder and straighter. Carolyn, a little softer, can come around to just a hair. Well, she's made it through the opening match here this year. Last year, she was in that opening match, along with Tis Johnson, also both defeated by the eventual champion, Tenille Grijalva. So she's one step closer this year to this major championship. Well, Liz's strength this week was she got to play her A game once again. She's had a lot of success this year. We've been able to play out a lot more, and Carolyn enjoys that also. Carolyn is an excellent outside player. She always believes that the, you know, angle from coming out, your carry will be a little better. Most of the time it is. Strength changing lines, as I said. She watched where Liz was playing her weakness. Slow to adjust, but how slow could she have been? Well, she felt like she should have moved Sunday instead of waiting until Monday to move out, and maybe she wouldn't be third. Maybe she'd be first. Correct. Of course, with her mental outlook right now and the way she's bowling, I'm sure that she expects to be first every week. Mm -hmm. I would think. I wouldn't put it past her. Leaving a 10-pin now, and she'll change balls to shoot that spare. Electing a ball that hopefully won't hook as much. Plastic ball, plastic ball. You always know where it's going. It's your safest bet for your spares, especially, most important, your single pin. We talked a little about Liz Johnson and her back problems. She does have a herniated disc in the lower back, and she's struggling with that right now. She's very fatigued, very mentally and physically tired, but then again, look at her. She's working overtime eight times already this year, so she needs a little bit of a rest. And you asked her exactly that, Kathy, about taking next week off. Here's what she had to tell us. Uh, it's, it's, it's been taking me a little extra time to get loosened up this week. Uh, my body's starting to get a little fatigued, and mentally I'm feeling a little tired. Um, I just want to try to finish out this week, take a good week off, go to the chiropractor, get, get healthy again, and um, get ready for the last two weeks and uh, hopefully finish out pretty big. There's that strength playing that A game. And so far, finishing out pretty big right here in this tournament. And her weakness was fast feet. Her fast feet, she felt, was caused because of her fatigue. 
when she felt she was getting a little tired and her back was getting a little tight, her feet would get fast to compensate. And she told us that's when she starts to pop up at the line, and I think all players pretty much are that way. If you get a little too fast, a lot of times she'll pop up at the line, not stay down solid. No doubt about it. So Carolyn Doran Ballard now trailing by 21 pins in the third frame. Come on. And Come another on. 10 pin. A little bit of frustration coming out of her. Really nice shot off her hand, nice and smooth, stays down at the line. Really nice extension. Great shot in the pocket. That was a, maybe a partial flat 10. Not totally flat, but like I said, Carrie was very tough this week. Covers that fair, and that's one of the reasons is you just mentioned that Carolyn chose to move out because she felt her carry was so bad from in. And what she's doing by moving out is creating a, a better angle into the pocket. Right. Absolutely. Straighter down and in for some players that can't get a lot on the ball, such as a Michelle Feldman, have to play a straighter line because it's safer for them to get to the pocket, number one. And number two, their carry statistically should be greater. Angle of entry, extremely important. 16 and 8 in match play. I know there were a lot of low games this week, and yet Carolyn Doran Ballard's lowest game was 181. I think that's pretty impressive. Yes. Well, Carolyn had the uh, number one TV average, 224.25. Liz was third with 213.25. That being on this TV pair, Liz Johnson, right now looking to up that average. She has the first three strikes, and because she has the potential, as you see there, to shoot a 300, we'll stay with you and not go away to break to see if she can get that $50,000 bonus once again from Travelodge. Liz, the player who earned it this year, just a few weeks ago in Davie, Florida. She said that really changed her life and her outlook on tour because she now had a little bit more financial freedom. And it happened during such a stressful, sorrow-filled week. I think it really meant more to her to do it, to bring a little joy to the crowd that was there. We spoke about that at that time. But sure, it loosened her arm swing the next week. She said, I can fix up my house. She has, she's going to be a godmother to her little nephew Noah. She's got to spoil him. Saw 15 career 300s, and that would be strike number five. So Carolyn Doran Ballard has her work cut out for her here. These two ladies throw a lot of strikes, though. They wouldn't be here if they didn't. Carolyn told us that the lanes basically came to her, so to speak, once she made that move an adjustment on playing the right line. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In sixth place, our scorekeeper again tonight, just missing the show, Leanne Barrett. And ninth place, Wendy McPherson. We've Kathy. seen her all the time. Yeah, Kathy, you're in 11th, another strong finish. And Kim Adler is still trying to win this season to extend her consecutive win years to nine. So far, has been unsuccessful. There's a look at those strikes. Pretty nice looking five strikes for Liz Johnson. Carolyn Dorn Ballard now on a double. Oh. Not making the turn there, leaving a two pin. Yeah, you heard her ask for a little hook. She didn't quite get it. Carolyn hoping to be successful this week. She told us last night, Kathy, that despite the year she's having, she didn't feel she has bowler or player of the year wrapped up yet at this point in time. Well, if we know the history of Carolyn trying to get bowler of the year, there's always somebody on her tail that is just on fire as she is. And there are a few girls. This one is one of them, winning three times already this year, making eight telecasts, looking for title number four. Carolyn Dorn Ballard, the runner-up for four consecutive years to player of the year and hoping to grab it this year. Liz Johnson hoping to grab strike number six. Well, and we know for a fact that Carolyn's the one to shoot the 300 against. <laughs> Liz throws a powerful ball for a straight player, just crushes the pins. No doubt about it. 
And you're exactly right, Kathy. Two of the 300s on television have been against Carolyn Doran Ballard. Yeah. One uh, by Liz Johnson, one by Michelle Feldman. Meanwhile, Carolyn Doran Ballard could still shoot 247, not too shabby, but nowhere near enough at this pace. Liz is tough when she's playing the part of the lane that she's best at. She's extremely tough. Uh-oh, and that one was not what she wanted. She got that out a little bit too far to the right. Didn't hook back quick enough. She got lucky. She almost had the 2 4 eight, 10. So the 2 10 is a lot more spareable, easier to spare than the 2 4 eight, 10. So Liz Johnson is out in front in the Hammer Players Championship semifinal match. We'll be back in just a moment. Carolyn Doran Ballard made two shots, a strike and then a 10 pin, which she missed. So Liz Johnson now in the lead by 51 pins. Carolyn hooked by that 10 pin just like we saw Kelly Kulik do in that first match. About a 310 split here for Liz Johnson. That's back to back splits, light and then high. I think she compensated for the 210. This after six straight strikes, two splits, and is not able to convert. The Bowler's Journal All-America team has been announced. Tish Johnson, Wendy McPherson, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, you're seeing tonight, Cara Honeychurch, and of course, Michelle Feldman. You'll see later, you saw Tish Johnson earlier, there's the plaques that they will be awarded. Sometime during this evening's telecast, they'll be handing them out just after the show for the ladies. And Liz Johnson right back on track in the ninth frame. That All-American team, very, uh, it's very impressive. It's, it goes by wins, television shows, basically just their entire record, but it doesn't really follow the calendar year. So that's why you might be confused about sometimes those who are named because it, it goes mid-season to mid-season. Very prestigious honor. So Calendor and Ballard now up in the ninth best. She can shoot 215. Liz Johnson can still shoot 245. She needs to strike out here to force Liz Johnson to mark. And that won't do it. Now that was a little odd because she's been pretty clean on that lane. And it looked like a great shot. Great extension, but jumped right at the end. Big four. A little surprised at that. It did look good. Maybe a little bit softer with the ball speed or something, but it did look like a good shot. She took two of those pins, and Carolyn will step up in the 10th, but really it's, it's a little bit late for her as she trails by 52 pins. At this point, the best she could shoot is 193, but still a phenomenal year, breaking another record, 16 telecasts in a season, and I think that I never saw that day would come. <laughs> I, I never thought that either. <laughs> never thought that day would come, actually. So Liz Johnson survives that match. When we return, we'll recap tonight's action, and still to come, the final match by Don Laughlin's Riverside Resort Hotel and Casino in Laughlin, Nevada. We'll begin with Pro-Ams November 30th and December 1st. U.S. Open competition begins December 2nd and concludes with a live broadcast on ESPN Sunday, December 9th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. That's immediately following the Men's U.S. Open Final. $300,000 will be up for grabs for tournament entry info. Contact the PWBA at 815-332-5756 or visit PWBA.com. And if you want to enter that Pro-Am, call Riverside, 800-227-3849, or you can visit them at RiversideResort.com. So far tonight in match one, Carolyn Doran Ballard had control all the way, defeating Kulik and Johnson, 233 to 152 and 171. In match two, Liz Johnson started with the first six strikes to oust Dorn Ballard, 244 to 183. Coming up next, Liz Johnson will try to stop Michelle Feldman's bid for back-to-back -back victories and her first major title. <laughs> in a nice setting in the background there, it's the Hammer Players Championship. Nothing hits like a hammer. Michelle Feldman, top seed once again for the second straight week. 
Won the event last year, last week, excuse me, last week, and looking to win again this week. Nine count going Brooklyn, and Kathy, we're told that she's very, very nervous out there because it's a major event. She told me yesterday, too, I'm very nervous. I think this is the most nervous I've ever been, and we all know she's led tournaments before. But she said, I've never made a TV show in a major event. And your nerves are a little different. Because then you start thinking about it. Yeah, it's, it's something totally different. I mean, the majors, obviously, if you look back in the history of this, this event, some of the greatest bowlers ever, and everyone wants to win the major events. Liz Johnson is familiar with winning majors. She has won a U.S. Open title back in 1996. But not the way she wanted to start this tournament after all those strikes last game, but a couple of splits in the middle of the match. Now, Carolyn played out also, so she may be experiencing a little breakdown because they were on the same part of the lane. Ball hooked just a little too quick. That's the result, but she'll get the two pins. Smart move. Looking at our other finishers, number 17, Lisa Bishop, our past champion here in 1999, and Marianne Derupo in 19th, our champion here in 1997. Finishing up in 21st, the 99 Rookie of the Year, Tiffany Stanbro, and in 22nd, Jeanette Pazinski. Boy, has she come out here and done well. Six straight cuts for that lady. She sure has. She's bowled very, very well. And there is another 710. It looks like no one was immune to the 710s this week. They were everywhere for everyone. Didn't matter what angle you played, you left one. Liz doesn't look like she'd leave one because of her power, just like Michelle Feldman, but she did. But it looked for a minute another pin was gonna stand back up. Well, the smart move again, just to take the wood. We talked about Michelle winning last week, and that was at the Three Rivers Open. There's a flashback to that event. She stepped up in the 10th frame, trying to shut out Tammy Turner. That was live, and a big break there for Michelle Feldman. She did win that event last week, and Tammy was unable to strike in the 10th. Michelle won at 2.06 to 191. 222 average this week, and we've talked so much about her struggling with the sport condition. Much of it, in my opinion, was her unwillingness to accept it and realize that she could play on it. I mean, once she got over that and just said, hey, I'm, I'm going to make the changes I need to make, she credited Alita Sill with helping her try to stay behind the ball a little bit more. Oh, for sure. Michelle realized she needs to roll the ball off her hand more to allow the ball to read the lane and not so much with her power to push it or chuck it out onto the lane, as we should say. So everyone needs to make their own adjustments. She just needed to know what her adjustments were and to make them. Right back on target for Liz Johnson. Liz was also a Rookie of the Year out here back in 1996. 98 Robbie Award recipient, and here's what she's doing in 2001. 18 tournaments and has made 16 of the match play finals. As we said before, very unbelievable that she's achieved that much this year. She had absolutely no idea or really intention to whack him, as we should say, the way she has been. Because she struggled with, with the back injury and her knee to disc and unsure of what she'd be able to do out here, but has gotten into a regular stretching and workout routine for the ab muscles, which really helps the back. And she's been fortunate enough to make it through most of the events this year. Yes, she just wanted to be able to compete and complete the tournament. And here she is practically, well, eight times she's had a chance to win. Maybe that's the key. Don't come out with any goals. No expectations. You, you can't, uh, like said, then you can't get let down. Exactly. Exactly. Talking about being let down, this lady, Michelle Feldman, as we talked about, a little bit of a struggle sometimes mentally, she wanted to give credit to Leanne Barrett. She said Leanne Barrett helped calm her down on many occasions and helped her focus on what she needed to do, and that was a very important thing for her in being so successful. And Kathy, you talked to Michelle and asked her how she feels here on her first major telecast. 
actually right now I'm pretty nervous. Um, I don't know what frame I'm going to have when I start, but I would love to win my first major here especially. Um, other than that, I'm just pretty nervous, and hopefully I can get through my one game and win. Doesn't look too nervous right now. Leanne Barrett told us that she was, you know, feeling a little bit nervous, sick to her stomach type thing. But once again, Leanne was right there like a trooper saying, calm down, relax. And I think that's great. I think it takes a, a true athlete and a big person to admit when they're nervous because so many people want to hide it or pretend that they're not when they are. I think that's great. What wasn't so great was the shot. Unfortunately, got a little wide or she might have even gotten it into the oil. Leaves the 24810. It is sparable. Especially for someone like a Michelle Feldman, who can throw hard and hook it, but she takes three of them. Got the wood, very important since she was on a strike. Three means six. Liz Johnson now stepping up in the fifth frame. She trails in this match. She too coming up a little light. She obviously adjusted from the split. She probably moved her feet a little left, projected the ball a little bit more right. There you can see she almost left the 2-8. The two pin gets kicked, and it's an easy single pin spin. So Liz Johnson trailing by 27 pins now as she gets ready to step up in the sixth frame. Only one strike. In the first five frames, one last match, we saw her with the first six strikes. Transition again, and that's been the key on our shows. But we took a look at her overall averages for the whole year. And while there's been a couple of low-scoring events, we have averaged over 200 on the TV show for the entire year. Yeah, and regardless of how slow the games start out, it always comes down to the last frame. Now it appears to me Liz switched balls. There's a big strike for Liz Johnson. We'll break for a moment, but stay with us for the conclusion of this match and the naming of another major champion. <laughs> Illinois Bowling Association Hall of Fame. It was a wonderful weekend for him. Unfortunately, he missed some of the events here, but all the uh, old friends came out from bowling. John's been involved in bowling most of his life and has been a big contributor to the su success of the sport. Liz Johnson now up in the seventh frame. She trails by just seven pins because she's working on a strike. As I said before, Liz switched balls. She's going to stay in the same area to go to a weaker ball, maybe with a little more shine to get it down the lane longer. That way she can be a little more aggressive and not worry about it hooking so early. While we were gone, Michelle Feldman made two shots, a strike, and a four-pin that was a light ripper. I mean, pins flying everywhere. Four-pin didn't fall. She spared it. That leaving Liz Johnson trailing by just seven pins. And that time, oh, oh. had a little break there. Big break. Two, eight, ten. Strong release, extremely solid at the line. Went a little too far. 2 8 10, something comes over. I don't know what pin that was. Knocked the 10 off. Left her with an easier spare. Wow. Oh, and not exactly the way you planned to shoot it. She lined up correctly, but. She must be hitting some conditioner in the center of the lane. Barely knocks them over. Top seed position. We mentioned it last week. It's the place to be. 13 titles this year from that spot, which is very unusual. It's typically around 50% as the years go through because top seed coming on doesn't have a game on the lanes. And sometimes it's not really that big of an advantage to be the top seed. But this year, it appears to be. Lane's undergoing a little more transition. The players come off their semifinal match and go, whoops, where am I bowling? And it depends who bowled before you, if they used surface or shine, depending on how the transition's going to break down. So number one's where I need to be. I have three more chances. There you go. I'm, I'm ready. She grabbed a handful there, which is easy for her to do. 
She's been working on that. Not being so grabby. Exactly. Yeah. Grab turn a little too much. Yes. It's one of the things she's been keen on, trying to just stay a little bit more behind, get a little more roll, as you mentioned earlier, Kathy. And roll is different from grab. Right. And Michelle covers that spare. And we've talked about it before. I know these ladies love bowling with the wheelchair bowlers. We have a Rollers and Pro Bowlers event coming up. That'll be Monday, November 12th through Thursday, November 15th. That's at Brunswick Mesa Lanes in Mesa, Arizona. And if you need information on that, you can contact that center at 480-834-0588. It's a wonderful time. Three-person team, ladies, wheelchair bowler, and senior PBA member. Liz Johnson with a big strike in the ninth frame. Best she could shoot would be 205 if she strikes out in the 10th. She would be able to force Michelle Feldman to double in the 10th. Or we could have a tie. We could. If she doesn't carry all these pins and shoots a 204, Michelle Feldman could strike spare for 204. Right now, though, Liz trailing by nine pins. Huge double for Liz Johnson. And on that note, let me say hi to Conrad and Karen, her mom and dad, up in New York. Big supporters of Liz. No nerve showing for this lady right here, being Liz Johnson. Michelle Feldman, though, maybe a sign of nerves, but closing her eyes, saying, hey, I know it's going to be in my hands. Let me just think about my shot, not what Liz does. And that's a hard thing to do. And, and on Michelle's point that's a smart thing to do keep your eyes closed don't watch you can, you can tell no you can tell by the sound of the crowd exactly. whether it was good or not and if they get a, a lucky break you don't necessarily have to see it liz is an excellent pressure bowler she's proven it over and over again well this is a big fill ball for Liz Johnson. She needs this strike to force that double out of Michelle Feldman. Wow, and she got it for a 2.05. What a big finish now. Michelle Feldman, it was her choice. She chose to start this match so she could finish on lane 10, and she has struck every time on lane 10. So as she steps up in the 10th, she'll need two more strikes on lane 10. Has not missed on this lane. All of her errant shots have been on lane 9. You can see she's taking an extra moment. That's the maturity. Definitely the maturity coming out in Michelle. Years ago, she would have already been up there. Number one. <laughs> wow. She can't throw it any better than that. No way. Absolutely awesome. Okay, and she's trying not to get overrun with emotion right now. Simple, strong, beautiful game. Makes it look so easy. Rips the cover off it. Ten in the pit. Absolutely no doubt about it. And she knew it. She wanted that. That's five strikes on this lane. She wants this one more, though. not hook enough. Liz Johnson, all she can do is look down and say, is it true? Did I just win? Michelle just got a little overly aggressive, but trusted it. Wanted to make sure she got it right. That was the smart move. Unfortunately, it didn't hook back. So Liz Johnson has just won her fourth title of the year. We'll be back with more. Don't go away. of the Hammer Players Championship are being brought to you by the Women's International Bowling Congress, striving for 86 years to identify and fulfill the needs of women bowlers. By Travelodge Hotels, first with families, relax with Travelodge.
and by PWBA.com, the official site for news and information about the Professional Women's Bowling Association. There's your champion of the Hammer Players Championship. Final score 205 to 202, and that's Liz Johnson coming in with a trophy. John Wonders, the president of Fab All Missouri. Hi. Liz, congratulations. Thanks, John. Especially in that clutch shooting down the stretch in that Thank final you. match. That was Thanks beautiful. On behalf of all the Fab All employees all over the world, we'd like to present you with this trophy, emblematic of your championship, and hope you win many more. Thank congratulations. You Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Holding that trophy will be the trick, but here comes the treat. It's a check, and Terry Brenneman, president of Fab Ball Baltimore. Liz, again, congratulations on a truly great come-from-behind clutch performance. It's our pleasure at uh, Hammer to present you with this $13,000 check. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just thank Fab Ball, Terry Brenneman, uh, and his staff. Uh, I'd like to thank Cherry Bowl, uh, John Anderson, his staff here, all the fans, my caddy, Bill, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank Travelodge, the Women's International Bowling Congress, for all your support. Um, and I'd also just like to thank my family and friends back home who couldn't be here tonight. Um, thanks, everybody. Congratulations again to Liz Johnson. She breaks it into double digits with career title number 10 and her second major. Tune in next Monday night as Kim Adler attempts to defend her Las Cruces, New Mexico Open title and record a win number nine straight years. All the action starts at 8 p.m. Eastern from Sun Lane. For Kathy Dorn, Lizzie, I'm Jan Schmidt asking you to keep an extra eye open for the trick-or-treaters and kids have fun, but please be careful. Good night and God bless. Of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.